This is the trend project for the zombies. The trend we chose was laptops for all. And this is Christina Peliquin. I'm going to introduce our project for you. Our parents walked to school barefoot in the snow 10 miles to and from. We went to school carrying 15 pounds of books in our backpacks. Today we have an opportunity though, an opportunity to not only physically help our children with a literal lighter load, but they will have the world at their fingertips as well, not just what can be crammed into an outdated textbook. In this trend presentation, we will show you the pros and cons of a laptop for each child. It will also conclude with a short assignment of just one of the ways you can utilize this program and implement it into your classroom. This is Kelsey Kugler, and these are the pros of having a laptop for every student. Can you imagine having immediate access to all the web resources? This will allow students to research information from many different perspectives. Can you also imagine the ease of access? There's no textbooks to carry, and it, the laptop itself is very lightweight. Plus, for schools, there are no textbooks to buy or replace every year, especially because they become out of date as soon as they are printed. Also, what's good is that real life skills are being learned on a laptop. These are needed for the work environment. Laptops and other technological things seen in this picture, but especially laptops, are great for group collaboration. They're also great for the environment because there's no books being printed. It's great for mobility and there's better note taking. Now let's look at the negative aspects of giving every student a computer in the classroom. Computers can be a useful teaching tool and they can also interrupt the fundamental concepts of teaching and be a huge expense for taxpayers. According to Heritage.org, $1.25 billion have been allocated for technology in K-12 classrooms. With that said, technology is very expensive. Now let's think about this. We have a fourth grader who we've just given a laptop to. It's quite possible that that fourth grader can break the computer as well as go on the playground and get into a fight and lose the computer. So who's responsible to replace it? Should the government buy a new one? And are the par or are the parents financially responsible? This brings up a very common concern that we have had in the public school systems for many, many years. It's the concern of paying for school supplies and many parents don't have the money to pay for just basic school supplies such as pens and paper and crayons. So how can we expect them to be financially responsible for a laptop? We've also looked at studies and they have shown that after giving computers to students, test scores and competency levels did not improve and in some cases they decreased. Computers also create distractions. Students can access the internet which opens up an entire world of content to view. They could look at porn, they can play video games, they can go shopping, they can blog, they can even go on their friend's Facebook page and post comments, all while the teacher is computing arithmetic on the board. Granted, computers can be an insightful research tool, but it also allows students to copy website content as well as utilize facts that may not be certified as legitimate. They're just simply someone's opinion, but students think they are facts. And in that case, they're not learning. And that's what we're not, we're not in school to not learn. Now, pencils and paper, they've allowed students to learn and advance to college for many generations. So I pose the question, will computers advance the students any further? Hi, this is Angela Trujillo, and I would like to start out with a few quotes from some educators. This one's from Eric Hoffer. In a time of drastic change, it is the learners who inherit the future. The learned find themselves equipped to live in a world that no longer exists. This is from Chris Tavani. As a teacher, I can cover my curriculum, I can get to the finish line, but often when I get to the finish line, I look around and I'm all by myself. We need to teach 21st century skills for our students. They have grown up with technology. They learn differently. 
And did you know that 63% of teachers do not use technology in their classrooms? How will this prepare our students for the real world? Because the jobs that exist today will not exist tomorrow. We must teach our digital learners in a way that will engage them. We can now incorporate parents, community, and the world to help our students learn. Just imagine one of your students Skyping with another student in China, and together they're working on a wiki page and teaching them different points of views and being able to work in a group. This will help our students become relevant in the real world. They are going to be able to be creative, innovative, communicate, collaborate. They're going to be having critical thinking skills and problem solving skills, which will help them in college, the workplace, and in life. And the possibilities are endless. Think of all of the curriculum that you could do online. We can do blogs instead of journals, Google searches, wikis, Google documents, digital storytelling. Kids want to be engaged. We must teach them to think, create, analyze, evaluate, and apply. We must prepare them for the real world. I'm ready to do that. Are you? Now it's time for you guys to do an assignment. We have a laptops for all assignment. I'm going to go ahead and read it for you guys. You have heard about why laptops for all could change your learning institution for the better or the worse. Can you name the three pros and the three cons that laptops could have in our schools? Can you also explain why having laptops is essential for 21st century learning? This is a link for the graphic organizer that coincides with the laptops for all presentation that we did. The second part to our assignment should be pretty fun. Imagine having access to a laptop in class. Today's assignment is to tell the class why these particular people have important roles in history, whether they are positive, negative, or neutral. What have they done to impact our world? Name three facts that you found via internet search. You cannot use Wikipedia. Once again, you cannot use Wikipedia. If someone has given you the fact, then you must find something else. The whole point of this assignment is to collaborate as a group and get as much information as possible. You must show your work, copy and paste the links that you use for research. I cannot wait to hear your facts. So here are the 10 people, Amelia Earhart, Harriet Tubman, Thomas Jefferson, Hitler, Ronald Reagan, Martin Luther King, Leonardo da Vinci, Albert Einstein, John Lennon, and Charles Manson. Remember, it's all about collaboration. So as many facts as possible, and remember you can't have the same fact twice. Uh, good luck. This is in Google Documents. I'm sure Noy's going to post it on Blackboard, but it's also in Google Documents and you guys have the link. Have a great day. Bye.